8. Mess Anak A massive Buddhist complex in Afghanistan is under attack, and archaeologists are in a race against time to save its treasures. For almost 10 years, a team of both Afghan and international archaeologists have been racing to save thousands of Buddhist statues, manuscripts, coins, and holy monuments at the site of Mess Anak before local violence puts the treasures at risk. Known for roadside bomb, rocket attacks, kidnappings, and murders, the area south of Kabul is home to something more spectacular, a sprawling Buddhist complex that dates to between the 3rd and 8th centuries AD. But it isn't only local violence that puts these artifacts at risk. A huge mining operation on behalf of the Afghan government, who wants to tap into a massive load of copper ore buried beneath the ruins, could obliterate an important part of history. Believed to be one of the world's largest untapped deposits with over 12 tons of copper, it has caught the attention of the Afghan government, who hope to secure it and the future of the country. For decades, cultural heritage advocates have known about the wealth in Mess Anak, not just monetarily, but in the importance of the ancient treasures waiting to be excavated and recorded. But local looters started to pluck out some of the treasures, adding yet another threat to preserving the history of the area. In 2007, the Chinese won rights to extract the copper there on a 30-year lease worth more than $3 billion. With the promise to build infrastructure for the underdeveloped district, the Afghans left at the opportunity to receive a $1.2 billion infusion into the local economy. But one can't help but wonder if the price tag is worth the risk of potentially damaging the unearthed treasures. 7. Skara Bray on the west coast of mainland Scotland, an archipelago known as the Skara Bray is the most complete Neolithic village in northern Europe. Once home to farmers who lived there between 3200 BC and 2500 BC, Skara Bray is older than both the Great Pyramid and Stonehenge. It is so well preserved, some have nicknamed it the Scottish Pompeii. In 1850, a fierce storm battered the archipelago, which resulted in a high tide and storm winds that washed away the sand and grass from the large mound. As luck would have it, the storm also uncovered the outlines of a number of stone buildings, and after numerous expeditions, a total of eight buildings were unearthed, allowing visitors to see how Skara Bray looked nearly 5,000 years ago. Using turf for the roofs, the homes were originally constructed into pre-existing mounds and included a central hearth and a stone fish tank to hold bait. With a number of houses connected by low-covered passages, the remaining buildings are decorated simply with beds, dressers, and seats built entirely from stone. During excavations, archaeologists found volcanic pumice used by villagers to create stone tools that had washed up on the beach from Iceland. They also found jewelry made from bone and ivory, cups and bowls made from whale and dolphin bones, and various other items including pendants, gaming dice, knives, and shovels. The inhabitants of the island also made a type of pottery known as grooved ware that had decorative group grooves carved into the objects. Coming to an end around 2500 BC, the settlement dissolved when the villagers abandoned their homes due to some type of disaster which archaeologists believe may have been due to the spray from salt water that destroyed their farms over time. Today, visitors can walk through a reconstructed home and see a number of relics at the visitor center to see how the inhabitants of Skara Bray once lived. 6. Urkash, Syria For years, Syria has been marked by death, despair, and destruction due to poverty and war. However, a dedicated group of locals are trying to protect an important archaeological site. Known as Tel Mozan, a high mound that towers nearly 90 feet above the plains and 3 miles from the Turkish border, is the location of a unique urban society that sprang up in southern Mesopotamia. Believing that city life first developed in the area around 3500 BC before spreading north, archaeologists conducted multiple excavations despite local violence and war playing out around them. As a dozen men worked to not only secure and maintain the fragile mud brick walls of the ancient settlement, a lost city was uncovered. The city that was important to a group of people who later influenced the Hittite Empire the sacred ancient city of Urkesh. Researchers uncovered a stone lion in the religious sanctuary that was remarkably similar to two bronze lions that are now in the Louvre and the Metropolitan Museum in New York. The two lions each have the inscription, the king of Urkesh built the temple of the lion. Could that temple be Tel Mozan? Perhaps not entirely convinced yet, 
excavators found more evidence of the importance of the site, which included a treasure trove of personal seal impressions that read, Chupkish King of Urkesh. The seals dated to about 2250 BC, with others mentioning his queen, Ugnitam, royalty from the Akkadian Empire who controlled much of Mesopotamia at the time. More recent excavations unearthed seal impressions and ceramics in the corner of a building that radiocarbon dates to about 3500 BC, which is also the same time as the first monuments were being built in southern Mesopotamia. As the workers continue to probe deeper into the mound, they are getting closer to Syria's past and uncovering the ancient city before it can be completely ruined. What else do you think archaeologists could find? Let us know in the comments below. And if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. 5. Persepolis Known as the home of the King of Kings for nearly 200 years, Persepolis was built on a massive elevated terrace with a series of royal palaces. At the time, no fortifications were needed. Instead, 10,000 guards served at the pleasure of the emperor, guarding the palaces. The city was once the capital of the Persian Empire from 500 BC until 330 BC. Today, it is a site with the ransacked ruins of a once elaborate place. Originally stretching from Greece to India, the capital of the Persian Empire was built by Darius and his sons Xerxes the Great. Today, however, the ruins now rest at the foot of the mountain of Mercy in southwestern Iran and are considered among the world's greatest archaeological sites. Renowned for its architecture, planning, and art, the royal city of Persepolis included palatial buildings including the Apadana Palace and the Throne Hall. There were once lavish receptions and festivals of kings and their empire. Various sculptures like gigantic winged bulls, throne rooms, and stunning views hosted warriors and guards, dignitaries and tribute bearers. Even though the ruins of Persepolis are not as decorated as they used to be, evocative reliefs still survive with symbols of supplicants bringing gifts to the king and massive royal tombs cut into the adjacent mountainside. Sadly, Persepolis was sacked and burned by Alexander the Great in 333 BC. As Persian dominance ended, Alexander spread Greek culture all the way to India, leaving Persepolis in ruins. 4. Ciudad Perdida Hidden deep in the jungle of the Sierra Nevada in the Santa Marta Mountains in Colombia, the lost city of Ciudad Perdida sits in the lush green vegetation. Built more than 1,000 years ago, the archaeological site was only uncovered in the 1970s and since then has become a major attraction in Colombia. Often compared to Machu Picchu, the lost city is perched on a hillside and tucked into the South American rainforest. The site is actually 600 years older than Machu Picchu and the only way to get there is on a brutal multi-day hike. Following dirt paths past large banana trees and towering palms, the 29-mile trek ascends and descends over small mountains. Snaking along the Rio Buritaca, the trail brings visitors through farming regions in an area known for its warring cartels and guerrilla groups. With various stone terraces carved into the slopes of the rugged mountains, a lush forest offers a stunning backdrop to the lost city. Until 1972, this gem remained hidden until looters, who were following the stone steps of the site, pulled back overgrowth to find gold jewelry and priceless ceramics. It took years of pillaging before the Colombian government would protect the archaeological site, and since then, they've helped to reconstruct the ancient city. It was once home to over 2,000 people. The lost city was built by farmers and potters who carved the terraces into the hillside some 18,700 feet above sea level. Before Spanish conquistadors arrived in the late 16th century, ancestors of the indigenous groups that live there today carved 1,200 stone steps that led up to the lost city, where oval-shaped terraces sat high within the jungle canopy. This pre-Columbian city, built around 800 AD, is sacred to the four tribes who descended from the Tayrona people and who inhabited the lost city before the conquistadors forced them to flee. Even though the city was rediscovered in 1975 by the outside world, Descendants of the ancient people had been and continue to make regular pilgrimages to this stunning site to this day. 3. Havalsi Would it surprise you to know that a prominent Viking settlement was discovered in South Greenland? It's known as Havalsi, and the site was once considered an important gathering point for the Norse, who settled in an eastern settlement and arrived by horseback, by ship, or sometimes by foot. At one time, a church was located at the site, 
with the last wedding taking place in 1408. Remnants of the church still linger on the hillside, with evidence that it was built over an older medieval graveyard. Today, high stone walls with some of the stones weighing up to 5 tons still stand some 16 to 19 feet high. There's also stables originally brought from Iceland, covered with turf that could hold up to 20 horses. Before Columbus had even thought about finding a new, shorter route to India, Norse settlers had established communities in Greenland. Havalsi, a farmstead in the eastern settlement, was the largest of three Viking settlements there. Norse farmers from Iceland settled in about 985. Vikings in Greenland built the Havalsi church during the 12th century to serve the Christians living in the nearby area. At its peak, the Havalsi parish included a church as well as 14 other buildings which may have included storehouses, homes, a banquet hall and residential complex. Even though the wooden interior and the roof no longer exist, the Havalsi church and the other building remnants offer a glimpse into the past of Greenland and the settlers who abandoned it. 2. Calakmul, Mexico 22 miles from the Guatemala border, a remote UNESCO site known as Calakmul sits among a vast jungle. Taking its name from the Mayan words for two and adjacent, Calakmul is known as the city of two adjacent pyramids. This makes sense, right? Existing for 12 centuries, the city is located in the southern area of the state of Quintana Roo in the middle of the Mayan region. It was once the largest and most powerful city in the coalition between the Mayan settlements of El Mirador, Nac Bay, and Uax Acton. Calakmul and its other counterparts often found themselves in conflict with its southern neighbors, specifically the Tikal in Guatemala. At one time, the city had 50,000 inhabitants and 6,700 structures over a 27-square-mile site. Calakmul was so powerful they were said to have influence over settlements as far as 90 miles away. Built similarly to Koba in the Yucatan, the city had a main plaza that led up to 20 secondary urban centers and is thought to have had more structures than any other mine settlements in the region. Various large platforms made up the central plaza, with a number of buildings spread throughout. Two pyramids make up the main structure of the site, with one stretching 130 feet and the other 150 feet, one of the tallest Maya pyramids ever discovered. Inside, nine royal tombs have been located, with rich artifacts like jade masks uncovered. Large water reservoirs can also be visited at the site, with many figures sculpted in stone and plaster. Over 100 stele commemorative stone slabs can be found at the remote ruins. It's no surprise that such a large urban area would be under attack, with frequent fighting taking place between Kalakmul and the people of Tikal. The city would fall to the Tikal in 700 AD, and eventually it was abandoned and overtaken once again by the surrounding jungle. 1. Taxila Another World Heritage Site, this time located in Pakistan, Taxila is found in Punjab. Dating back to the 5th century BCE, the city is known as the center of Buddhism in the country, with many statues of Buddha in various stages of his life unearthed over the years. Countless stupas or dome-shaped Buddhist shrines still remain, with one located at the highest peak in the area, as well as others included in a complex of chapels and monasteries. Mesolithic caves and the archaeological remains of four early settlement sites have also been unearthed there, showing how the ancient people evolved over five centuries. Other sites show the prehistoric importance of the site, with evidence that the area was inhabited during the Neolithic, Bronze Age, and Iron Age. The Beer Mound contains some of the oldest ruins from ancient Taxila. Excavated from 1913 to 1925, the ruins of the town show the haphazard layout of the narrow city streets and houses that had no windows. Further excavations uncovered a hoard of over 1,100 coins, including a number of Achaemenid coins from Persia and Greek coins, both from the 5th and 4th centuries. Its location made it vulnerable to the elements, with an extreme tropical climate and earthquakes that still pose a threat to the remaining ruins. Sadly, as the mound was excavated, not much care was taken in recording the finds. Later excavations of the site were done more carefully, with glass, carnelian and agate beads located, as well as other gemstones such as amethyst and garnet. In 326 BCE, Alexander the Great conquered the area, resulting in Taxila later losing its independence and becoming a provincial capital instead of the hub for trade between eastern India, western Asia and Kashmir. As the trade routes declined, so too did Taxila's importance, before finally being destroyed in the 5th century CE.
10. Golden Tongued Mummies Earlier this year, a team of archaeologists unearthed several mummies with golden tongues inside 16 burial shafts at the Taposiris Magda Temple in Alexandria. This is believed to be part of a ritual to ensure that the dead could communicate with the god Osiris in the afterlife. The graves date back to Greek and Roman times. The remains are poorly preserved but contain clear evidence of gilded cartonage as well as false tongues made from gold foil. One mummy contains gilded decorations of Osiris. Another bears a crown with horns and an interesting looking cobra on it, as well as gilded chest decorations resembling a necklace with a pendant shaped like a falcon's head, which symbolizes the god Horus. In addition to the golden-tongued mummies, the team found eight marble funeral masks also dating back to the Greek and Roman eras, which were crafted in intricate detail and made to resemble their wearers who were probably of very high status. These recently discovered artifacts represent the latest of many discoveries on the site, including coins bearing Queen Cleopatra VII's name and image, which were found in the temple walls. 9. Prison City Built near modern-day Gaza around 1300 BC, roughly 3,000 years ago, the ancient city of Rhino Cholera was reportedly named after the mutilated faces of its residents. Yikes. Their noses were hacked off prior to being sent there as a criminal punishment. The metropolis functioned as a penal colony of sorts with prisoners being kept within its walls for life. Guards sat perched in towers as high as 66 feet, keeping a watchful eye over those that lived in the city, but also knowing that if anyone escaped, they would quickly be identified as a convict based on their missing nose. With very little water or bureaucratic oversight, life was hard in the city, which was more or less self-governed. Some historians believe it never even existed. Evidence of the settlement is scarce at best, and most accounts of the place date to thousands of years after it was supposedly built. During the first century BC, Greek historian Diodorus Siculus wrote that Rhino Cholera was founded by the Ethiopian king Actisanes as a place for people convicted of robbery. According to the Greek historian Strabo, however, the city was founded by Ethiopians whose noses were cut off as a punishment for trying to invade Egypt. While nobody can prove that Rhino Cholera existed, evidence shows that cutting someone's nose off was actually a common criminal consequence in ancient Egypt. It served the purpose of hindering someone's expressions, impairing both their body and their personality. 8. Mummified Shrew Over 2,000 years ago, the ancient Egyptians buried shrews, falcons, and other animals at the Falcon Necropolis, a burial ground at the Cana site in the Nile Delta. Many of these creatures don't exist in Egypt anymore, giving researchers the opportunity to learn about how the environment and biodiversity have changed over time. Recent discoveries include a mummified shrew that hails from a climate much wetter than that of modern-day Egypt. This indicates that the region was once much damper than it is now. Known as the Golden Stott's white tooth shrew, the creature dates back to sometime between 2500 and 2000 years ago, a time that saw a significant increase in the emergence of animal cults. The Falcon Necropolis functioned as a place for offering animals as a way of worshipping the god Horus. Some species are found in such great numbers that experts believe they were more or less commercially farmed, specifically for sacrifice. But shrews are one of the less common creatures found at the site. This could be because they were easier to trap than to breed, according to Salima Ikram, who co-authored a paper on the findings. This means that the Golden Stott's white tooth shrew was likely native to the region since it was probably caught in the wild. Scientists have identified several shrew species at the site, and this latest discovery adds to their understanding of the variety of animals that the environment could support over 2,000 years ago. If you had to join an animal cult, which one would you join? Let us know in the comments below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. 7. Pharaoh's Stone Slab Earlier this year, a farmer near Ismaili, Egypt discovered a 2,600-year-old stone slab or stele linked to the pharaoh Apries. He found the 7.5-foot sandstone marker while preparing his land for cultivation and contacted the country's tourism and antiquities police. The stele bears an image of a winged sun disk, which was sometimes associated with the sun god Ra, and a cartouche of Apries himself. Beneath these depictions are 15 lines of hieroglyphics that are currently being translated. It was a very curious find indeed. But who is Apries? Apries reigned from around 589 to 570 BC during the 26th dynasty. Egypt was independent at the time, with its capital often located in the northern region at Sais, according to live science. 
the Greek historian Herodotus wrote that Apries was either killed or replaced by another pharaoh named Amasis after fighting a losing war against the Phoenicians that ultimately sparked an Egyptian civil war. Historians hope that the Steles hieroglyphics will shed light on these events that most people don't know anything about. 6. The Amarna Letters A collection of nearly 400 clay tablets known as the Amarna Letters contained the world's earliest known examples of international diplomacy. Dating back to the 14th century BC, they detailed the correspondences between Egyptian pharaohs and their rivals, including Babylonian, Assyrian, Hittite, and Mitanni rulers. These letters capture the raw human emotions that came amid competing tensions and delicate negotiations between the region's rulers at the time. They also contain rules and conventions for these types of interactions, which represent the earliest diplomatic policies. Basically, it's a collection of all the ups and downs between the contrasting cultures. Known as the Armada System, these protocols establish a level playing field of sorts between different powers. Rulers used the system for over 200 years as a part of the empire-building process, and it served its purpose well by maintaining a semblance of peace and stability between competing civilizations. The tablets spanned the reigns of several 18th dynasty rulers, including Amenhotep III, Akhenaten, and possibly Smenkari and or Tutankhamun. The first batch of letters was discovered in 1887. Some modern researchers believe that they were woefully overlooked and insist that more attention must be paid to them because they offer invaluable insight into ancient international relations. 5. Egypt's Copper Source There are periods of ancient Egyptian history that experts know very little about. One of them is the Third Intermediate Period, which lasted from 1070 BC to 664 BC. A new study of four 3,000-year-old bronze funerary statues called Ushabtis reveals the existence of a copper trade network between the Egyptians and the Arabah region south of modern-day Israel. This commercial relationship continued during a time of turmoil even as civilizations near Egypt were collapsing. In the words of Bendor Evian, a curator of Egyptian archaeology at the Israel Museum in Jerusalem, the research shows Egypt continued to play a significant role in the region despite its internal strife and the decline of ancient empires in the Near East. Ushabtis were common grave goods in ancient Egypt which were believed to perform duties on behalf of the deceased. The four that were examined in the study were found at the pharaoh's capital of Tanis and date back to sometime between 1056 BC and 1010 BC, during the reign of Susanus I. This marked a period of uncertainty, political disturbance, and invasions in Egypt, which was split into two kingdoms known as Upper and Lower Egypt. Despite the division, Susenes I managed to import copper and facilitated the continuation of Egypt's flourishing metal art at the time. These findings challenge long-held beliefs about Egypt becoming extremely isolated during this period and show that even when the going got tough, the civilization maintained its connections with the outside world. 4. The Bent Pyramid In the royal necropolis of Dashur, south of Cairo, there are two pyramids, the more significant of which is known as the Bent Pyramid. Both are roughly 4,600 years old. They were conditioned by the 4th dynasty pharaoh Snefru around 2600 BC during Egypt's Old Kingdom. Standing at 331 feet tall, the Bent Pyramid represents an architectural transition between the Djoser Steppe Pyramid, which was built between 2667 BC and 2648 BC, and the Maidum Pyramid, which dates back around 2600 BC, the same time the Bent Pyramid was built. It's named for its bent look, which results from the structure rising up from the ground at a steep 54-degree angle, then tapering off near the top at a 43-degree angle. The location of Snefru's tomb is unknown, but researchers believe it's possible that he was laid to rest inside the bent pyramid. In 2019, the site reopened to tourists following extensive reconstruction for the first time since 1956. Visitors enter through the pyramid's north face before traveling through a 260-foot-long tunnel, which leads to two chambers. They can also explore the smaller 59-foot-tall satellite pyramid, which may have been dedicated to Snefru's wife, Hetaferes. 3. The Location of Puenet The ancient Egyptians imported and mummified captive baboons for centuries. Some of these primates likely worked as service animals, helping to chase down criminals while others were used for worshipping Thoth, a deity who is sometimes depicted as having a baboon's head. It's not the baboons themselves, but where they come from that intrigued primatologist and anthropology professor Nathaniel Domini, who told Life Science that the ancient Egyptians imported primates from Puenet. There's ample evidence to suggest that Puenet was a real place, 
Egyptian historical records describe it as the land of their ancestors and praise it for its abundance of trade goods like resin, gold, ebony, ivory, and wild animals. But experts have never actually been able to figure out where Puenet is. Until now. Maybe. In a recent study, a team of researchers compared isotopes from modern baboons with information from seven mummified specimens in hopes that the results would lead them to Puenet. Two mummies dating back from 1520 BC and 1075 BC during Egypt's New Kingdom period came from a region of East Africa encompassing parts of modern-day Eritrea, Ethiopia, and Somalia. Five others which date back from 332 BC during the Ptolemaic period appear to have been captively bred. These findings indicate that Puenet was most likely located in the Southern Red Sea region, along the coast of Eritrea and Somaliland, according to Domini. While this isn't proven, all signs point toward the conclusion being accurate, and the study has brought experts one step closer to definitively locating what was, until now, a seemingly mythical place. 2. Solar Ships Back in 1954, archaeologists uncovered a nearly intact ship in a pit near the southern face of the Cheops Pyramid, more famously known as the Great Pyramid of Giza. The 144-foot-long ship known as the Great Boat of Khufu is one of the world's oldest known plank vessels. It offered unprecedented insight into ancient Egypt's shipbuilding practices. Researchers believe that the ship was used by the pharaoh Khufu himself for pilgrimages from Memphis to Giza. Earlier this year, archaeologists announced the completion of their excavation of a second Khufu ship from another pit near the Great Pyramid. Nicknamed Solar Boats, this and the first Khufu boat are believed by some to have been used by Khufu as part of his persona, the sun god Re, during his daily travels across the sky. Other experts think that the vessels were funerary boats and that they were possibly used for transporting Khufu's body along the Nile River. But nobody knows for sure what the ship's purpose was. Researchers hope to come closer to solving the mystery by examining 1,700 pieces of the second vessel that they recovered, which were transported to the Grand Egyptian Museum for further study and assembly. Dating back over 4,500 years, this newly unearthed ship is already offering new insight into ancient shipbuilding practices. For example, evidence shows that the ancient Egyptians used metal in their ships. Reporting for ZME Science, TB Puyu pointed out that the first Khufu boat was likely adorned in gold and intricate decorations and was truly outfitted for a god among men. While it's unknown whether the second boat was anywhere near as magnificent, it's sure to bring new insight into these royal vessels. 1. The ancient Egyptians were skilled musicians. Music played a major role in the culture and everyday lives of ancient Egyptians, who especially valued the harp, tambourine, and flute, according to Egyptologist Dr. Bassam al Shama. Speaking with media outlet Ashark al Aswat, he described inscriptions inside royal tombs that depict the harp as a highly regarded instrument of Egyptian origin. Nearly two dozen artifacts testifying to ancient Egypt's musical skill were put on display this year at the Egyptian Museum in Tahrir to mark World Music Day. The items included a funerary plaque with a harpist inscription, single and double flutes made from reeds, and pieces of colored leather that were used as drum covers. The ancient Egyptians used music in many aspects of civic and religious life, including in feasts, celebrations, rituals, and temples. They treated music as an organized art with rules, as well as respected supervisors and trainers, according to Egypt today. The deity Hathor was closely connected with the protection of music and musicians in ancient Egypt, as well as the deity Bes, who was the protector of households, particularly mothers, children, and childbirth. These ties represent how major of a role music played in the ancient Egyptians' everyday lives, as well as special occasions. Ten, saber-toothed monster. Something terrifying happened 260 million years ago. For the first time in the history of the planet, a predator possibly even more terrifying than any of the dinosaurs, was introduced to the world. This predator was called Inostrancevia. It was a carnivorous monster with huge saber-toothed canines. It lived in what is today Siberia and was significantly more dangerous than any other predator alive at the time. The monster could grow up to 12 feet in length, its skull alone being over 2 feet long. Its teeth were so big that they could easily puncture flesh and pierce skulls. Even stranger is that this monster wasn't how you're probably picturing it. 
it wasn't like a saber-toothed tiger. Instead, it was kind of a mix between a mammal and a reptile, a kind of creature known as a synapsid. It lived during the Permian period, and its teeth were over six inches long. It could run as fast as a lion, and when it caught its prey, it used its teeth to either kill its victims by asphyxiation or simply let it die from blood loss. It was roughly the size of a bear, but with teeth like a T-Rex. Honestly, this is a nightmare creature, and if it were still around today, it would probably be one of the more deadly predators known to man. Although knowing humans, we probably would have hunted it down to near extinction if it were still around, and locked the rest in zoos. 9. The Aquanistian Shark Before dinosaurs, there were sharks. Oddly enough, after the dinosaurs, there were also sharks. Sharks have been a constant predator in the world's oceans for millions of years. One of the earliest and most terrifying of the sharks was a beast called Acmonistion. It lived from between the late Devonian period to the early Carboniferous period. The most unique thing about this prehistoric shark is that it had a crest on the top of its head that kind of looked like an anvil. Sharks today have a single fin sticking out of their back, but this one instead had an anvil jutting out from the top of its head. It also had a collection of spines, kind of like tiny porcupine quills on its head, in front of the anvil. What exactly the spines were used for, or even the anvil crest for that matter, is a total mystery. It seems like it would have been defensive in nature, as a sort of helmet to protect itself against predators, but scientists have no confirmation of that theory. Even though this shark is pretty freaky, it probably wasn't that dangerous by modern standards. The beast only grew to be about three feet in length, basically nothing more than a baby when put beside the megalodon, which could grow to be around 60 feet long, or even the modern great white, only about 20 feet long. 8. Scutosaurus The Scutosaurus was a very strange reptile that came before the dinosaurs. It has been described as an armored reptile that probably grew to be roughly 10 feet long and weighed a ton. This creepy reptile monster lived sometime around 252 million years ago in what is today Russia, in the evolutionary melting pot that was the Permian era. Interestingly enough, these creatures are in no way related to dinosaurs, but were actually very early ancestors of our modern turtles. Picture this. The Scutosaurus was a giant turtle with no shell that traveled in large herds for safety. Instead of having a hard outer shell to keep away predators, the Scutosaurus had bony plates all over its back. Now, remember the terrifying saber-toothed monster we talked about earlier? That was actually the main predator of the Scutosaurus. They lived in Russia at the same time, and although this was basically a huge, very ugly turtle with armor plating, it was still no match for the carnivore. The reptile couldn't even chew its own food, and instead gobbled food along with rocks, with the rocks helping to grind vegetation inside its stomach, making it easier for the digestive juices to work. I guess the predators of the era thought it was pre-chewing all their food for them, and had no problem trying to turn them into giant turtle soup. 7. Giant Sea Scorpion The giant sea scorpion is exactly what it sounds like. It was a giant scorpion that lived in the sea about 467 million years ago. It was actually identified recently as the oldest Eurypterid in the world. Eurypterids are a group of arthropods that lived in the water, ancient ancestors to the spiders, ticks, and lobsters that still live on the planet. But this thing was way larger than a tick. It was about the size of a person. And it wasn't actually a scorpion. It was more like a lobster mixed with a spider that could stand almost six feet tall while scuttling across the floor of the ocean. It would make the scorpions of today look absolutely puny in comparison. The fossil of this terrifying creature was discovered in a meteorite crater in northeastern Iowa. According to James Lamsdell, one of the leads on the excavation, the giant sea scorpion was one of the most important predators of its day in the early Paleozoic ecosystem. It was remarkably preserved thanks to the waters at the bottom of the meteorite crater, which sat undisturbed for millions of years and had almost no oxygen in them. There may have been other creatures like this. Scientists just haven't found them yet. 6. Giant Trilobite 
scientists recently discovered a giant species of trilobite that once lived in the waters off the coast of Australia about half a billion years ago. The trilobite measured roughly two and a half feet in length, or the size of a person's forearm. It was a nightmare creature that would have towered over the modern crustaceans that live in southern Australia. Scientists also found evidence that the monster may have been a cannibal, feasting on its very own kind. But just what is a trilobite? It's a creature related to modern crustaceans like lobsters, crabs, and some insects. Trilobites are also some of the oldest creatures that have ever been found by scientists. Thousands and thousands of trilobite specimens have been found, helping scientists to understand what is known as the Cambrian Explosion or the sudden appearance of life on Earth about 540 million years ago. This was a time when all the major animal groups came into being, but most of the trilobites found have been tiny, just a couple of inches or even smaller. This particular trilobite was a giant, and scientists named it Redlichia rex, after the Tyrannosaurus rex, because rex means king in Latin. And of course, this trilobite was king of its kind, it's the biggest of over 20,000 described species. If you stepped on one of these while walking on the beach, suffice it to say, you'd be in for the shock of your life. 5. Elasmosaurus A sea monster discovered in Antarctica has proved to be the heaviest of its kind ever found. This beast is known as an Elasmosaurus and weighed a whopping 15 tons. Even more amazing is the fact that it took several decades for scientists to finally unearth the bones of this prehistoric monster on a small island off the coast of Antarctica. This aquatic reptile swam alongside dinosaurs, but it wasn't actually a dinosaur. It evolved out of something that came way before dinosaurs ever existed, terrestrial reptiles. Somewhere along the line, reptiles evolved back into the ocean, grew two pairs of flippers, and learn how to use locomotion to repel themselves through the water. That's right, evolution works both ways. It led some animals back into the water after becoming landlubbers. So far, pleosaurs, which is the family the huge elasmosaurs belong to, are the only animals scientists know of that use this kind of motion to swim. What did the huge elasmosaurus look like? It was kind of like a manatee mixed with a giraffe. It looked awkward to put it bluntly but it looked delicious to plenty of massive predators in those ancient oceans. It was a strange reptile that could grow to be nearly 40 feet long, but that's on the extreme side, with most Elasmosaurus only growing up to 5 tons, or just a third of this monumental monster from Antarctica. 4. Arthropleura The Arthropleura is an extinct giant invertebrate that looked kind of like a millipede, but could grow to nearly 2 feet wide and up to 6 feet long though some scientists say they could have grown even larger. Imagine a millipede bigger than you scurrying across your front lawn. This is what an Arthropleura was, and yeah, it was pretty terrifying. According to National Geographic, the Arthropleura was the largest bug that had ever lived on land, and it did so during the Permian era between 320 and 290 million years ago. It remained refound in Pennsylvania, but it was a different climate than the one of today. This was a time when North America and Europe were much closer to the equator, and so they were covered in lush swamps and vegetation. All that vegetation, along with the animals of the time that died and fell to the ground without being eaten, then decomposed under pressure from rocks, turned into petroleum, and they are what you're using today to heat your house and drive your car, as weird as that sounds. The giant bug had a body composed of 30 jointed segments, with each segment covered by plates. These plates fell off when it died, which is why not a single complete fossil of an Arthropleura has ever been found. What's the biggest insect you've ever seen? Probably wasn't 6 feet long, but it may have been pretty massive. Tell us about it in the comments below. And if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. 3. Giant Cambrian Shrimp a gigantic monster from the Cambrian era was recently unearthed in Greenland. This creature is believed to have been the first filter feeder ever to troll the seas. It had bristly appendages all over its body just like a shrimp, which it used to feed off the smaller critters blooming in the newly developed ecosystems of the seas, smaller organisms similar to krill. The shrimp-like monster has been named Tamesiocaris borealis, and it lived during the Cambrian explosion from about 540 to 493 million years ago. 
according to Jacob Winther, a paleontologist from the University of Bristol. It probably evolved from one of the top predators of the time to become the biggest and baddest filter feeder anywhere in the world. It lived in the Arctic Ocean specifically, but this was at a time when the Arctic was a tropical ocean south of the equator, as crazy as that sounds. It may not sound daunting, but this huge shrimp monster was 2.7 feet long. This in itself isn't that gigantic, but the fact that it looked like an alien with eyes on the end of stalks, a mouth that looked like a piece of pineapple, and long bristly arms, it would have definitely been a scary thing to witness. 2. Dimetrodon The Dimetrodon was a mammalian synapsid that lived about 290 million years before today. In simple terms, it was a giant lizard that went extinct 40 million years before the first dinosaur showed up. It had a giant spine sail on its back, made from spine bones extending out of its vertebrae, giving it a menacing appearance in life, and a freakish appearance as a skeleton. It walked on four legs, had a massive skull and jaws full of teeth, and archaeologists have primarily found its skeletons in the southwestern United States. What did this huge reptile monster do? Well, it's not quite a reptile to be technical. A lot of people mistake it for a lizard or dinosaur, but that's not the case. Even though it looked like a reptile and kind of resembled a giant lizard, it was actually more closely related to mammals, though it wasn't actually a mammal either. As you can tell, the classification of animals before the dinosaurs is a bit difficult. All scientists really know is that the Demetrodon was definitely an apex predator that fed on fish and tetrapods, including actual reptiles and easy-to-catch amphibians. As for that giant spine on its back, Scientists believe it was probably used for thermal regulation or to keep its body temperature at the proper level. 1. Giant Dragonfly Before the dinosaurs ever walked the earth, there was a giant dragonfly that would make you pee your pants if you ever saw it. It's called the Meganuera and it went extinct about 300 million years ago in the late Carboniferous period. It looked like just a normal dragonfly except that its wings extended to over two feet long. The dragonfly was so big, it could have picked up your cat and flown away with it, assuming your cat was pretty small. And it would have done it too, seeing as it was a predatory monster. It's also the largest flying insect known to scientists and one of the earliest relatives of modern dragonflies. Fossils of this incredible insect were first discovered in 1880 by French coal miners then described properly in 1885 by the French paleontologist Charles Brognard. There have not been many specimens found, so experts don't have a full understanding of the Megan Wera's biology, but they do say it probably had huge eyes that were way larger than its body, giving a whole new definition to the term bug-eyed. Thanks for watching. How would you feel about living with giant dragonflies? Let us know in the comments and be sure to hit the subscribe button for more awesome videos like these. See you next time. Bye.